Mike Yursich to Texas? And what's going to happen to Kevin Wilson? Oh, it's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> what's up, Ken folk? It's RJ Young. I'm not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. So it's college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And today, I want to have a discussion about Ohio State co-offense coordinator Mike Yursich and Kevin Wilson, who's tight ends coach, but I don't think gets enough credit for how he has helped put together an attack that suits Ryan Day and his play calling skills with this outstanding Ohio State team. Now, as Ohio State Buckeyes fans will know, one of the things that's going to happen to their staff that's already happened with Jeff Halfley taking the job at Boston College is you're going to get raided. It happens to Every single team that puts together an outstanding season. Now, Dabo Sweeney's had it happen a couple of times with Chad Morris able to replace him. Jeff Scott's going to go to South Florida. He's proven that he could do this. He's made five college football playoffs, right? Nick Saban continues to have a rotating door of assistant coaches. Felt like it was going to catch up with him this year. And if catching up with him is two losses and a Citrus Bowl invite, then that's what it looks like. He's been phenomenal. The best coach of the decade might be the best coach for me of all time, is the best coach for, for me of all time, especially in college football. We can have a Belichick discussion at a later date. But Lincoln Riley has been able to keep together his staff, but hasn't won a national championship. Five straight Big 12 titles, but I've always thought it was really, really cool that he's able to keep the offensive staff intact, and he was basically pushing, not basically, he did fire the defensive staff to bring in new defensive members. We'll see what happens with Alex Grinch and Roy Manning and Brian Odom down the line. But as we're talking about Ohio State and we're talking about Mike Yersich and Kevin Wilson, these are two coordinators or former head coach and Kevin Wilson that I'm very, very familiar with. Kevin Wilson, offense coordinator at Oklahoma, coached into a national championship game, outstanding individual, I've always just wished him well, wanted it to work at Indiana. It didn't. He fell into Urban Meyer staff as a tight ends coach. He's been there and been really great for them. And he also got a look for the Colorado State job that eventually went to Steve Adazio. Now, Urban Meyer was also a part of the search team, so Urban Meyer has done a great service to all the guys that work for him and helped get them power five jobs. Talk about Tom Herman, of course, Steve Adazio, Dan Mullen. We can continue to talk about Ryan Day taking over and try, obviously trying to help Kevin Wilson out, but Kevin Wilson has reached a stage in his life where being a head coach is not absolutely positively what he wants to do anymore. He liked Columbus. He likes Ohio State. And I think that if something were to happen to offense coordinator Mike Yersich, he might be next in line. And that's an easy sell if you're Ryan Day. I help you outline what you're going to do with your program and how you're going to attack defenses. Kevin Wilson was at the forefront of modern football at Oklahoma. And I think that he's been outstanding everywhere he's gone. Unfortunately, Indiana just ain't a football school. And that's always going to be a difficult place to go and win football games. Now, with Mike Yersich, this is a guy that came from Shippingburg University and was setting up Legos to demonstrate how a trick play would work out there coming from Edinburgh. <laughs> Mike Gundy pulled that guy out of the ether, brought him to Oklahoma State, in large part because Mike Gundy hated having a rotating door of offensive coordinators. Somebody would come in, they would run the system, and then they would leave. Dana Holgerson, Todd Munkin among them. So he brought in a guy that he thought he could hold on to for a while, and Mike Yersich learned how Oklahoma State's offense ran and then ran it. Average 38 points a game, 478 yards a game, was able to do this with outstanding kiddos like Marcel Aitman, 1,000-yard rushers, and guys like Justice Hill. Oklahoma State's offense was really good with Mike Yersich, and when he got hired away to Ohio State, I always felt like perhaps he was looking to take a job as a head coach next from there. But it feels like Tom Herman is going to try to go the Urban Meyer route, go back to the place to where... They've been putting out pretty good coordinators and get Mike Yersich to come and run his offense. Already hired Chris Ash, who was the defense coordinator at Ohio State when he was the offensive coordinator at Ohio State, to run the defense at Texas. Now, the thing that I've found interesting about all this is Tom Herman has basically said, I'm going to take my hands off the offense, all right? It's not working. I can't do it all. Because I contend Tom Herman is an outstanding recruiter and an outstanding evaluator of talent. Just take a look at where they're going to finish in their 2020 cycle and in the 2019 cycle, right? When we're talking about who he was able to go get, I continue to tell people it was Tom Herman who brought Joe Burrow to Urban Meyer and said, I found your next Alex Smith. Urban Meyer didn't immediately believe him. We know how this is working out for Joe Burrow. 
I think that if Tom Herman was able to do what Dabo Sweeney does, what Nick Saban does, what Mac Brown was doing when they were absolutely winning, and just go recruit and be a CEO head coach and let Mike Yersich or someone of that kind go and run his offense, it's going to be outstanding. It's going to be a lot of fun. I found it interesting that Rhett Lashley decided that he was going to stay at Southern Methodist. That still seems to be the case at present because he runs an offense that was not totally dissimilar from the power spread that Tom Herman loved so much. And Rhett Lashley proved he could do it with Shane Bouchelle and James Prochet. And those dudes were able to just go out there and get W's. Now they got waxed by Florida Atlantic, but that's a different discussion. What I'm saying is Mike Yurcich coming to Texas feels like a fit. He understands the Big 12. He knows what offense needs to look like to succeed in this conference. And I think it would be a home run hire for Texas if they can lure him away. And I don't think he's leaving for anything less than Tom, leave me alone. Let me coach my quarterbacks. Let me coach my wideouts and my running backs. and Get out of my way. I'm going to let Herb Hand do his thing with the offensive line. Now, with Tim Beck being the quarterback's coach, be interesting to see because Herman actually credits Sam Ellinger, or excuse me, Tim Beck with Sam Ellinger progressing as a passer this year. And he did. He wasn't great, but he gotten better. Now, if they put in what looks like a modern offense and they're able to run something not unlike what they were running at Oklahoma State when Mason Rudolph was pulling the strings, then Texas actually gets to join the rest of us and maybe they don't get snuffed out so quickly because getting beat by Texas Christian, getting beat by Iowa State, getting beat by Oklahoma, losing to Baylor, these aren't things that are going to go over well in Austin. And as much as many OU fans make the joke of give Tom Herman a lifetime contract, I would like to see Mike Yersich down there. I would like to see him going at Oklahoma and Oklahoma State once again. I think that it would suit their recruiting as well because they'll be able to get guys that are much more likely to get drafted into the NFL in the first, second, third round than not. And that is really what it's about when we're talking about how do you recruit. Kiddos tell me all the time, I want to play for national championships and I want to get to the NFL. Texas doesn't play for national championships, doesn't make the college football playoff, and has yet to put somebody else in the first round since 2015. That has to change. And with the way that offenses generate just yardage after yardage after yardage in this conference, it should be easy for Texas to do. But it's not, right? The idea that Jet Duffy could go for five bills or that Jet Duffy could go into the portal and be a commodity as a quarterback and not beat Texas, but certainly give Texas the business is not what you're looking for. Whenever De- whenever Yost, David Yost, is running a better offense than you are, that's, that's shady Dave Yost that didn't need to be there. All right. I'm just going to say that Texas ought to be better than Texas Tech. That's just true, right? And I think that going to get Mike Yersich helps you tremendously with that. I think elevating Kevin Wilson also gives Ryan Day another set of capable hands and capable eyes to help him game plan and understand what he needs to do. But I'm going to be real interested to see how Ryan Day deals with people poaching his staff, guys taking jobs, and what that looks like going forward because going into the Fiesta Bowl against Clemson, He's undefeated as a head coach, so he obviously knows what he's doing. He obviously would know where he wants to go to go and get guys. Be interesting to see who he elevates to defense coordinator or if he goes and gets a brand new guy. Ohio State's a lot of fun right now, particularly when you think about what the staff might be doing and how Ryan Day might adapt. All right, that's it for me. Doses.